Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer. The feature race at Oaklawn Park on Saturday. Graded stakes action for sprinters and the four-year-old debut of Jackie's Warrior. It's the grade three Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. Carded is race number 11. $500,000 is the purse. Let's take a peek at this field. And the story of the race is going to be Jackie's Warrior, who was sensational for most of 2021, Mike. Had a hiccup in the Breeders' Cup sprint, came out of the race with an injury, now returns first time Lasix for Steve Asmussen. And some might say six to five would be a gift. Yeah, it might be. Um, I thought you do still have to worry about that Breeders' Cup race, I guess, though, Dan, because it was it was really disappointing to see him, you know, just sort of end what was a really a super three-year-old campaign with a bit of a dud there. Um, out at Del Mar. We'll see if he's uh, back to the goods here uh, off the layoff, because if he is, this field can't beat him. He has a lot of speed, and we'll throw up the time form U.S. pace projector and see where they have Jackie's Warrior. Not surprisingly, it's out there on the early lead. Empire of Gold, a veteran, he's pretty quick out of there as well, but I don't think he's as fast if Jackie's Warrior brings his A-game. No, they're not as fast as this horse um, if he's, you know, ready to go here right off the bat. You just got to get out of the gate. If he breaks the gate, fine, he will be in front. The good news from a tactical standpoint for the number one mojo man is he's versatile. He can win from off the pace. He can win from on the lead. He's banked over a half million dollars the hard way. He's only won one stakes race. That was a 65 grand or at Indiana Grand. But he picks his spots and he does well. Ten lifetime wins, including this effort last time out against allowing forces at Oaklawn. And he went right to the front in this race. And he holds very gamely. And this is what he is, a game, game horse. Maybe not a top horse, but a game, solid runner. Yeah, he is. I, I like his last two starts then. I think he's run really well in both of those. He didn't win two back, uh, but that was a nice performance and a real step in the right direction for him. And then he just got the job done here with a better trip. Um, it was maybe somewhat surprising to see him go to the lead in there, but it was the right move and he never looked back. Chip off the old block is an Indiana bred who won three starts back at Oaklawn, going three quarters of a mile. Beaten by Hollis, who is just a five and a half furlong freak at Oaklawn, two starts back. I won't hold that race too much against him. Last time out in the Mojo Man replay, we just saw he tried to get out a little bit and he got stopped. I don't know whether he would have won anyway, but maybe it was enough to, to cost him a closer placing. Yeah, he might have been closer at the end. I didn't think he was going to win that race. Um, you know, he's just one of the horses in here that it's, pretty hard to make a, a real case for him in this race, Dan. He's just really never run a race that's, if everybody shows up in here, he's just never run a race that's going to that's gonna beat this field. Let's get lucky. The number three, never off the board from nine lifetime starts. This is a Calbred four-year-old that still retains some upside potential. Two starts back on dirt in the California Cup sprint. He chased Brickyard Ride. He's kind of a poor man's Jackie's warrior. That horse just went right to the front. Let's get lucky. Was under a lot of pressure and then understandably tired after doing a lot of hard work on the chase. He rebounded on turf last time out, and he was more patiently ridden. Now, this is only a Calbred first-level allowance race, but let's get lucky. Finished it off well. He seems equally adept on turf and dirt. Yeah, he didn't. He ran well in this race, too, when you just consider. He didn't break that great. Um, they stayed on the outside with him, and it just kind of feels like turf probably isn't his best surface. Um, so just the fact that he was able to get the job done here, I guess is a feather in his cap. His prior two starts on dirt, he ran pretty well in both of those, and he got figures for him. Empire of Gold was fourth in the 2020 Breeders' Cup Sprint, won by Whitmore. He's won twice since then, including his most recent start at Remington Park. To conclude his 2021 campaign, he has good speed. Whether he can take pressure from the likes of Jackie's Warrior and keep going, that's a different story. He might be the one on a very hard chase here. Yeah, that's what I didn't like about him in here. I mean, I feel like if you take Jackie's Warrior out of the field, um, Empire of Gold has the credentials, has as good credentials as anybody else in here um, to be really competitive. But with his running style and Jackie's Warrior right outside of him, it's going to be tough for him in here. 
Jackie's Warrior is up next. Joel Rosario, Steve Asmussen. The horse's record speaks for itself. Eight for 12, 1.5 million in earnings, multiple grade one stakes winner at two. Beat Life is Good in a very thrilling edition of the Alan Jerkins. Toyed with a overmatched field to the tune of a 110 buyer speed figure at Parks. And then the Breeders' Cup, he broke fine. And there was a brief second, it was very, very brief, at the three-eighths pole where it looked like, okay, Jackie's Warrior put away that Japanese speed horse. He's going to put away Special Reserve, and he's going to be on his way. Well, Special Reserve didn't go away, and then you knew at the 516s, Jackie's Warrior was in trouble, and at the quarter pole, he was done. Yeah, I looked at the race the same way when you watch it. I mean, he wasn't, you know, super sharp early in that race like he usually is. Um, but you're right. There was a point where I felt like maybe he's finally going to get away from these pace horses and, and then we'll see what happens. And he just couldn't even do that. It was a really disappointing effort for this horse at the Breeders' Cup. Um, I guess he came out of it with, with some kind of an excuse, Dan. I mean, it's pretty obvious right there on paper for you. Um, any one of his races prior to that as a three-year-old, they're just going to dust this field. But he came out of the race, as Mike mentioned, with an issue. There was an injury. He has been given plenty of time. And it just looks like Asmussen's found a great spot for him to make his four-year-old debut. Bob's Edge is up next. This horse loves Woodbine. Larry Jones has gotten him in great form. He has won three of his last four, including this effort in the grade three Whitmore. He has the recency edge over Jackie's Warrior. And if they go fast early, he's going to run late. And as we turn to the stretch, where's Bob's Edge? No Bob's Edge. This can't be the right video, Mike. What are we talking about? There's no Bob's Edge anywhere in the field. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes this streak. And it's Bob's Edge. And he rallies by everybody to win. This horse has gotten good in his last two races. He is a one-run closer. They better go fast. If they do, he runs late. Yeah, they're going to go fast in front of him because, because Jackie's Warrior is in the field. And Jackie's Warrior doesn't go slow uh, on the lead in his races. So this horse is going to have something to run at here. Um, if the good Jackie's Warrior shows up, he probably can't catch him. Um, but it just feels like this thing is going to set up the right way for this horse, uh, who, as you say, his last two races are both really good. Top pick time. Before we get to the top picks, again, I want to remind everybody, please head on over to the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel. Click on the subscribe button. You'll have access to all of DRF TV's latest video offerings, all the Timeform US podcasts, all the DRF breeding reports, all the Oaks Countdown and Derby watches, all good stuff. Now a top pick time. I have a feeling I know where we're going in the Count Fleet. Yes, Jackie's Warrior is going to be our top selection in here. See some chalk on your shirt there, Mike. I know. Well, listen, I, I, I don't want to pick against him. I just think he's too good for these horses. And I actually, I'm hoping that he comes back and runs yeah. one of his good races here, Dan, because you want this horse to be good as a four-year-old. He has star potential to be sure, and it'll be very, very interesting to see where he goes if he is successful here. 5-6-3-1 for Mike, 5-6-3-1 for me. It's the Count Fleet. It's the feature at Oaklawn on Saturday. It's Jackie's Warrior. Good luck.